Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, office above the garage. Uh, today we are back looking at the scanner. We did a video last week talking about math parameters, in particular how you can use math to take your mass airflow sensor input and output a VE table. Man, it was deep, it was black magic, mind-blowing stuff going on there. Today though, we're looking at something that's a little bit more down to earth and is honestly one of the best tools in your toolbox. It is using functions and filtering on your graphs to get the data specific that you're looking for or to filter out bad data. That being said though, let me go ahead and take a second and say thank you to all the new subscribers out there and all the new patrons. If you are not already a subscriber, make sure and click the button down there and I suggest that you ring the bell. That way you don't miss out on all the live stuff. Now, as I said in the past, I've got a little disclaimer about subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe to this channel, you will learn how to tune vehicles. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. These videos will eventually impart upon you the knowledge of how to tune. I uh, have no doubts in my mind, and a lot of other people have found a lot of value from. So you don't want to miss out on it. On top of it, if you do find any of this information helpful, please throw a thumbs up out there. That helps to get the information in front of other people so they can find the information helpful, and the channel grows as a uh, result. So that being said, back to the topic at hand. As I said, we are talking about scanners and specifically how we can leverage the power of the scanner to clean up our data and make our jobs easier as tuners. You already know that you have a parameter list that you set up beforehand and that parameter list populates all the data from a log and then we apply graphs and charts to it. Well, the graphs and charts are an after the fact. You can see them uh, apply uh, information to the data in real time, but you don't have to have anything loaded up in your graphs and charts. You can go in after you've done your log, build all that out and then see the same stuff. And that's kind of where filtering comes into because if we have a condition that we find out during a log that we had a good log run but something was acting up, we can filter that out. In particular, I had a viewer ask me about filtering out information based on accelerator position on his VE tables, which is a fairly common thing to do. A lot of people like to uh, isolate a range and so they'll put a range of throttle in there and then other people like to, you know, maybe keep uh, zero throttle out of the picture because whenever you're in zero throttle you're often in idle maps whether it be on VE tables or tuning there are additional changes being made to those base tables at that zero throttle position same ordeal with DFCO theoretically you could leave DFCO on and then filter out all of your zero throttle uh, data from your VE table and not even have to worry about it uh, we find that it's easier just to turn the thing off, but you still might get some false data in there and the filtering allows you to fix that or at least get it off of your chart so you have something that is easy to copy and paste over into your actual table. So let's jump over to the tune screen. Let's see what's going on there and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, here we have a log. Uh, I believe this is a log from my own truck. In fact, we've got some VE information in here. Everything's looking pretty good. If we go in, you'll see that we want to uh, do accelerator pedal position. Luckily, this log already has it uh, as a parameter. Just like everything else, you have to have it beforehand. This isn't something that you can do after the fact. So if you're trying to filter off of something that you did not log as a channel from the get-go, it's not going to work. Let's go in, look at our graphs layout, and underneath there we have filtering. We've got two options. One of them is function. That's the one we're talking about today. The other one is cell hits, and that's one I've, I've touched on in the past where cell hits basically says whenever you're collecting data, these tables are broken up into cells based off of your column and row axes, and as you move through this RPM and this air mass or pressure ratio, that determines where the cell is, and then the parameter is applied to that cell. Well, the cell hits required says how many times data has to be populated into that to get you that average value. So if you had that with zero, every single time it crosses over that cell, it's going to give you that value. Now, if with it being at five, that's saying that a cell has to have at least five data points averaged in there before it shows up on our table. The other thing about this is on functions we use variables, but we can't use any math. So like we are doing a parameter of AQ error ratio math right here, we can't use that as a filtering 
function. But what you can do is actually go into the math and the user math section and apply functions to the variables in there to do the same thing. So if for some reason you were trying to only capture EQ ratio between uh, greater than 5% error, say, you can actually go into the user math, do all of your EQ ratio uh, computation, and then at the end of it, do a greater than 5. And then the math output's only going to output whenever it's greater than 5. So you can't double up on the filtering function that way. But what we're doing today is we're looking for accelerator position, accelerator pedal position. Now, this is an important thing to notice. It's the units. Whenever it comes to filtering, the units can throw you off. In this case, a number, being that we normally think of accelerator pedal position in percent, a number is going to be a num numerical representation of percent. So 9% is 0 0.09. You have to remember that. Same ordeal where 100% is just one. So if you were to go in here and put number and then say, I wanted everything over 10%, you're not going to get anything because with a number, 10 is a thousand percent. So we want to make sure and put it to what we want to filter against, in this case, percent. So now we have it in there. This is our variable scene. And the way it is now, it says only provide data if there is a value in accelerator pedal position. Now, if you were not logging accelerator pedal position and you put a function to filter off accelerator pedal position there, it would completely wipe out that table. You wouldn't have any data in there because it would say, hey, there is no accelerator pedal position, so none of this is true. This is a Boolean kind of statement of yes or no, on or off, one or zero. So, but now that we do have that in there, there's always a value because we're logging it, so we get the full table. This is where we can come in and we start filtering some of the value out. And in order to do that, we use the arrows, or we use equals, or we use the exclamation point. So if we say equals uh, one, it's only gonna show us data where it equals 1%. There's not much data in there because we're going off the accelerator really quick. So if we go zero, it'll show us only data in here where we're at 0% accelerator position. And it's where you would think that it is. So the cool thing about it is we can come in here, we can do this a couple different ways. We can go in there and we can say equals zero, or if we want it to be anything besides zero, we can do not equals, which is exclamation point zero. And it should give us anything that does not equal zero. That does not seem to work in this situation. So I might have to do some more research on why that variable is not a standard style variable. But we could also say if accelerator position was greater than zero, there it populates a big map in there that shows you all the data whenever it does not equal zero. So if we look at it where the, all this data is now missing, we can change this back over to equal. There's all the data that was missing then we can go greater than zero. And there's still some data overlap in between those areas because some of those areas, there was some, some throttle input in there. So if we were to keep on shifting this thing up, say 5% though, the amount of data that we have gets smaller and smaller as we filter out less and less. Well, what if we wanted to do a range? Well, if we wanted to do a range, we can say we want all the data above zero, but then on top of it, we can use the same arrow on the other side and say that we want all of the data under 30%. Now, the information on our screen is between zero and 30% accelerator position. We can also narrow this thing down. We can come down to 10%, and then we have a very small range of numbers that is between 0% and 10% throttle position, or accelerator position. So, that is how we use functions. And we can apply this to about anything that you log. So if you wanted to say, come in here and look at your coolant temp for whatever reason, you can come in here, change this out, do coolant temp. And we'll do that in Fahrenheit. And so we have the original one. And then we can also, here's how we do this. We'll put some brackets around this to isolate them. And then we should be able to do the same ordeal for this one. Function, if we say it is uh, greater than 10% or 100 degrees, and then we put a bracket there. There we have the section where it is uh, throttle from zero to 10% whenever the coolant was over 100 degrees. Now you notice that whenever I took this out, 
it changes a lot of the data because it is taking in mind all of this. That's why we have to isolate this with parentheses. If you don't isolate that, it will keep that all as one variable. As long as you have these variables bracketed off, as it were, you can do multiple variables to one log. So just keep that in mind. And that's basically it. It is pretty straightforward, very simple, and it is a very powerful tool whenever we are editing our logs to be able to get the data that we want and to filter out bad data. I like it in particular for filtering out bad data or to try and set a range of data if I'm trying to do very minute, uh, detailed style tuning. And that's where the benefit comes in by being your own tuner. As opposed to going out to the guy that's doing the dyno tune and things like that, you can really focus on the trouble areas and format that data in a way that it helps you get everything dialed in, solved, running great. So. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, suggestions, make sure and hit up the comments. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I mean, we want you as a part of the family. The Goat Rope Garage family keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the more family members, the better. Uh, as always, I want to thank everybody for stopping by the garage. Remember the old motto of ABT, always be tuning. And in fact, I think, I don't know if you can see it here, but my shirt probably says always be tuning. These shirts are available on the merch store. I would suggest not getting the dark red one because you can't really see the logo very well. That was a dumb move on my part. Make sure and check out the live show on Thursdays. That's Thursdays, eat a eat, eat a stream, <laughs> eight Eastern. Thursdays at eight Eastern to nine Eastern. We do a one hour live show called in tune. And it's a great place. If you have specific questions, you can show up and I, tr I we're getting you know, a lot of people showing up there. I still try to get everybody's questions answered within an hour, but we're having problems. But still, it's fun either way. It's a great opportunity to learn from other people also. So show up to the live show on 8 Eastern on Thursdays. Uh, as I said, ABT, always be tuning in. Thanks for stopping by the garage.